Hi everyone, I'm David from Olympus and welcome back to another quick tutorial video. Today I want to talk to you about ProCapture, but there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about before we go into the demonstration. So you've got two options in ProCapture. You've got ProCapture High and ProCapture Low. And the difference between them is the focusing options that we choose. Now ProCapture High can shoot at 60 frames per second, which is unbelievably quick. As such, we can't use continual autofocus in that mode. So we use single autofocus when we're doing things like zone focusing, perhaps on an animal feeder or a specific spot on the ground where we know a subject's gonna pass through it, because that first frame will lock the focus there and it will stay there for the whole process. Now ProCapture Low can use continual autofocus, so we can use that for tracking things like animals. Today we're going to use ProCapture High because I'm going to give you a demonstration on something that you can do at home given that we can't get out as much at the moment. So we're going to do some splash photography using ProCapture High and then we can zone focus at 60 frames per second on some water splashes. So let's get in there and take a look at the settings and see what it's all about. Okay, so let's just look at the setup here. We've got a constant LED firing at a white background that's gonna shine through the glass. Fake whiskey made up of a tea bag in a bottle of water and a pen on my glass to help with my focusing. And I've also got some fake ice cubes there. They're made of plastic, so they're not gonna break the glass at all. Okay, let's see about the setup. So from a completely reset camera, I'm gonna go into the Pro Capture settings and set everything up that I need to shoot with. So we'll press menu. And then once we're in the menu, we'll go down to the cog icon and from the cogs across into C1. And this is where we set the custom releases. And then we'll go over to H settings because we're using Pro Capture High Speed. And the third option down there is Pro Cap. Once I'm in there, I can set the maximum frames per second. So we'll stick with 60. Uh, we've also got our pre shutter frames here, which is currently set to 14. And I think what we'll do with that is we'll just put a few more in just to capture a little bit more motion uh, before we press the shutter. So we'll go into there and we'll set that up to around about 20. Once I've done that, I've got a frame count limiter. This is the total shots, including the pre shutter frames. So the ones before I press the shutter and everything after and I'm going to set that up to 45. That seems like a lot, but this is 60 frames per second, so we're going to need all of those shots to get a good one. Now, because of the way that I'm going to shoot this, I'm just going to set the aspect ratio up to a slightly different look. It's just going to look better for you guys watching the video at home. So I'll press OK for my super control panel. It'll go down to my aspect ratio, and we're going to change that from 4.3 and send it across to 3.4. Okay, so we're going to set up the rest of the controls. I'm going to go back into the Super Control Panel now. And we're going to head on over to our ISO. Now I'm shooting with an LED constant light, so I need quite a high ISO in here. So I'm going to pop this all the way up to 3200. I'm going to press OK on that. And I'm going to come back out into my Super Control Panel. And I'm going to go down to my focusing options and make sure that I'm in manual focus across into my drive modes and obviously set up Pro Capture High. I'm now going to change the memory card settings. Uh, at the moment I'm shooting in large fine JPEG, so I'm going to go into my memory card settings and ask it to use dual independent, which will give me a choice of using RAW and JPEG in each different card. Once I've done that, I can go back into the Super Control Panel. Uh, my memory card slot 1 will choose RAW there, and we'll have a large super fine JPEG in the second slot. So now let's set up the exposure settings. And uh, this is really bright at the moment, so I'm gonna wait, wanna take this down a little bit. So the first things that we're gonna look at is changing our shutter speed. We need a really nice fast shutter speed for water, so around 1600th of a second. And F4 on this lens is gonna give us a nice depth of field for this particular size of subject. And then I've got my pen on top, which is gonna help me manually focus somewhere in the middle of the glass. Uh, that's obviously where the splash is gonna hit the most. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the RMCB2 remote cable release and I'm just going to do a little half press on that. And when I do half press on that, I should get a little twin green arrow up there at the top. And whilst that's visible, it means that the camera is buffering those shots. Uh, but if I release it, then those shots will disappear into the ether. They're not saved to the memory card or anywhere else, which is quite useful. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at my focusing options and I need a little bit of an assistant on that one. So I'm gonna press the menu and go into my manual focus assist 
settings. Once that I'm in there, I can select uh, both magnify on, and I can also select peaking on, so that when I manually focus, these two become active. So remember, this is just a little help in hand, so that when I go into focus manually, magnify kicks in, and my peaking kicks in as well, so I can see exactly the point of focus that I need. Okay, so a little half push and I'm buffering there and it's only in the camera's internal memory. Now, a quick little tip when you're gonna drop something into your water or your liquid is to dip it in first, hold it above and wait for a drip to come down into the glass and that will tell you exactly where it's gonna land when you do drop it. So here we go in three, two, one. That's it, in they are, and that's my process finished. You can see the memory card icon is flashing there. That's telling me that it's buffering up. But even though it's buffering up, I can actually start to look at the images that have already been written, and that's one of the benefits of the EM1 Mark II, Mark III, and EM1X range. So here we go, whilst that's still buffering, I'm having a quick look back at these images, and I can skim through them. This is a nice 60 frames per second shot of that water splashing out of the glass. So we can go through those uh, backwards and forwards and see the ice cubes literally retreating back. And that's the benefit of Pro Capture. It is like a little time machine. So ultimately, we want to go forward, find the shot that we like the most, which I think is going to be somewhere around the next couple of shots. We'll come back in, move it backwards, and there, see the water slowly coming back out and somewhere around there. So we'll have a quick look in to make sure that we're happy with that shot. Looks pretty good. And I think this is probably the shot that we're gonna to use to do a quick edit on. So let's have a look at how that came out. And there with a little bit of editing is our final image. Okay, so hopefully that's helped you understand Pro Capture a little bit better. And if it hasn't, obviously you can always put your questions down here in the comments bar and we can try and answer them for you. Alternatively, you can of course book a one-to-one -one virtual session with myself or any member of the team. And there is a link up here on our Facebook page where you can go and do that. So until the next time, stay safe, stay shooting and look after yourself.